Hi everybody, this is Jennifer Logue again from the Berkeley Lab. I'm a research scientist working on indoor air quality issues in residential energy. Last week we asked you guys to send in some of your questions about indoor air quality and this week we're going to answer some of those questions. So thank you again for all your questions and we hopefully we'll give you some really useful information for your homes. So many of you had a question about how to pick a range hood for your home and this is a great question. So when you go to the store there's lots of choices and there's a, it can be confusing about what the right one to pick is. Um, the first and most important thing you want is you want a range hood that is venting to the outside. Quite a lot of range hoods are just grease traps. They catch the grease and then they put the pollutants back in your home and you don't want that. And then when you're looking for a range hood the next thing is to think about how you cook. Um, if you're going to cook on the front burners then you're going to want a range hood that extends over those front burners. And you also want a range hood that is above the, um, the cook surface, not one that's trying to suck the plume back down, because that's going against gravity. You want one that's above the plume and is capturing the plume. And then it's nice if you have one that's a bowl shape, so you have like this nice bowl to catch the pollutants so there's time to exhaust them to the outside. You also want to make sure that the flow rate's sufficient so that you're moving the amount of pollutants that you want to the outdoors. And if you're going to cook on front burners, the flow rate you're really looking for is 150 to 200 CFM. That's cubic feet per minute. And those are the standard numbers that people use to rate flow of range hoods. So you also want to make sure, if you're looking for the range hood flow rate, that it's been tested by a certification company. One really good one is HVI, that's the Home Ventilation Institute. And if they say it flows at that rate, then you can pretty much trust their numbers. Um, the last thing you really want to think about is noise. Um, quite a few people don't use their range hoods because they're quite noisy. So if you're looking for a range hood that you're going to use regularly in your home, you want to make sure that it isn't too loud. The metric they use for this is zones. So three zones is a pretty good number for 200, 200 CFM. If you can get, below, get three zone or below, that's good. Um, if you have no idea what zone means, that's fine too. Basically, if you can in the store turn it on, Turn it on, listen to it, and think about what that noise is going to be like in your home, and use that to help make your decision. So we had a great question from Nirali, and I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Um, she, read, she saw a uh, story that we did in NPR that talked about how to use your range hood most effectively, cook on back burners, turn it on high, um, and she was wondering what other things she could do in her home to improve indoor air quality. Um, so here's, if you're concerned about indoor air quality, here's a couple things that you can do. Um, one big source of indoor air pollutants is unvented combustion. So this includes candles, if you, have, um, if you have a gas fireplace that is not vented, that can potentially be a problem. If you have a natural fireplace that is not vented, that can also potentially be a problem. And these are um, larger problems for those who potentially have respiratory concerns, people with asthma, people who tend to be very sensitive to respiratory issues. Um, in addition to that, you can look into, use, into buying materials that are low formaldehyde yield materials, materials that don't emit as much pollutants as other materials. This is a bit more extreme. If you want to, if you want to, if you're also, if you're concerned about um, some indoor pollutants, you can get an air cleaner. Um, you really want an air cleaner that focuses on removing particulates um, or, or dust, dander, these are allergens, particles. You want to be careful though because some of them generate ozone. Um, and you, you definitely don't want anything that's generating ozone in your home. Uh, hopefully this helps. It's some tips for improving indoor air quality in your home. Um, you don't have to follow all of them, certainly, but if any of them are, are accessible solutions for you, I think that's great. So uh, Trisha was concerned about smelling gas in her home and whether that presented an indoor air quality issue. Um, so smelling gas is a concern. Um, basically, most companies put something in the natural gas so that you smell it and you know there's a leak. But it's not as much of an indoor air quality concern as it is a potential explosion concern if too much natural gas gets into your home. So it's unlikely that that will happen quickly, but if you smell natural gas, you should contact your natural gas supplier and have them come check it out because that is definitely a hazard and you should take care of it as quickly as you can. Another question comes in from Keith who's concerned that newer, tighter homes may lead to there not being a sufficient oxygen coming in. So um, tight refers to how many leaks or cracks are in the building's envelope. And those leaks or cracks allow varying amounts of oxygen to come in from natural forces. So Keith was asking whether a family, a normal sized family breathing all night with the windows and doors closed could cause a, a problem with running out of oxygen. And the, the simple answer is no. Even the tightest homes on the market right now, you're gonna get sufficient oxygen into the home. The real concern with venting is taking all those pollutants that are generated in the home and moving them out. 
So you're venting to remove pollutants, you're not venting to provide, provide oxygen, at least in the current housing stock. Um, and with that, I want to just say thank you for sending in your questions. Uh, and if you have any future questions, please email us at askberkeleylab at lbl.gov, and we'll do our best to get back to you. Thanks. Thank you.